you guys up I feel like I haven't recorded anything in a really long time <laughs> it's been really hard to find time um, if you know you know but high pipes high pipes a daisy oh you putting your paw on the table to hell um, I am a solo mom part of the time my husband is a firefighter paramedic so there will be days like today where I am alone for three days in a row with this one and I have about 15 reptiles and I have a three month old. Okay, go lay down. So it makes it pretty challenging and I'm gonna talk to you about the nanny that I hired and no longer have. I'm gonna talk to you about breastfeeding and I opened up the floor to you guys for some questions so I'm sure we're gonna have some of those as well so I'll try and get through kind of my little updates. Carlo is due up from her nap like anytime now. I use an app called Cubtail we have a really bad nap problem in the house right now. It is awful. Um, and they're flying around my face. Uh, it's this app where you can kind of, uh, like not kind of, you can log diapers, poops, sleeps, etc. So like while Nick's at work, you can see when I gave her a bath, when she ate last, how much she ate. It's, it's pretty cool. So she um, has been sleeping for two hours and seven minutes. So um, if she doesn't wake up on her own in the next 20 or so minutes, I will wake her up. But I have a feeling she's gonna join us in a little bit. Harlow is now three months old and we hit a new milestone just today. I was talking about on my Instagram stories. I was um, standing in the kitchen and she was playing on her mat, like stretching out everything. And she rolled over from her back to her stomach. <laughs> and I came over and I was like, what like just shocked and she did it again so she is now rolling over from her back to her stomach and what that means is we can no longer swaddle with her arms in we just kind of got into a really good nap routine with the ollie swaddle and she's been taking um two one i would say one and a half to three hour naps every two hours or so and it has been absolutely amazing this started i want to say about four days ago i am able to actually get some things done and you have to be very particular with your time like gone are the days of procrastinating like i used to just get up in the morning get my coffee i'd make my lists i'd be like i'm gonna work out in a little bit i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that no now i have to make a list i have to be very specific and particular with like how I spend my time. And so I've gotten more organized in that way, but I also feel very disorganized right now. <laughs> and you might be sitting there as a new mom looking at my hair and my makeup and being like, how, how did this bitch get this done? Okay, so I decided to take this nap time to get ready and feel like a human being and put makeup and jewelry on this does not happen anymore. So I, for right now anyway. So this is uh, like soak it in because you never see this on my stories. You do get filters, which is nice. <laughs> it protects you from what's, what's actually happening. But uh, yeah, I thought I would do a little something for myself today to feel a little bit better, to film a video and here we are. So that's how I chose to spend this nap time. So a lot of people ask me how we've been getting her down for a nap and I can kind of go into depth uh, about that later but like i felt like we tried like everything so if you want to see a video kind of on that let me know but basically we put on a baby sensory lullaby video um some of them the screen actually goes like darker as it as time goes on so we kind of roll her bassinet in front of that do the ollie swaddle i've got my monitor i pretty much carry this guy with me everywhere we use the baby sense monitor it comes with two cameras it's super awesome. It's not connected to Wi-Fi, so I can take it when we go camping, put it on her in the motorhome. Like I took it to Germany with us in case we were putting her down for a nap and we were in the living room or something. So it's awesome. I really like this. It also plays music if you want and lullabies and white noise. So you can also zoom in. It's very grainy, but it kind of gets the job done. 
Harlow is sleeping at night and wakes up once throughout the night. It's generally at 3 a.m. And if she doesn't wake up at 3 a.m., she gets up at about five, six, or seven. It really depends. And if she does wake up at three, she still also wakes up that other time. <laughs> so I feel like we're doing pretty good with that. And I'm pretty stoked. Like, it's nice because when Nick is home, he will take a night and then I sleep on the, we switch sides of the bed and I just sleep and he deals with her and like handles her, feeds her, does all the stuff and it's great. So um, Harlow has actually been sleeping during the night with that same like wake up schedule since she was like three weeks old, I'd say. So we got pretty lucky there. Um, and during the day when she naps, I don't nap even though I'm exhausted still. I don't know why, but I, could, I feel like I could sleep forever. I don't know if it's like mental exhaustion and physical exhaustion, but I'm just like, I could just sleep. Like, it doesn't matter if she, you know, would sleep till 9 a.m., which she has done before. I'm still like, let's go back to sleep. I need more sleep. So hopefully one day that'll change. I really want to be that person that's like, okay, it's 7 a.m. Let's get up. Let's do the damn thing. Let's work out. Let's get breakfast. Like, let's make our to-do list. Like, I want to be that person so bad. So if you are that person, please give me some tips on how to become that person because that's, that's one of my goals. Let's talk about breastfeeding really quick. So I am no longer breastfeeding, sadly. Um, I really wanted to breastfeed until I was like, until I, I until Harlow was like a, like a year minimum. Um, that unfortunately did not happen for me. And I wanted to like make a separate video all about that because I never, you don't know until you know, and you're in the trenches, how difficult breastfeeding can be, um, physically, mentally, all of those things. And I wanted to just make a really raw, honest video about it because I know that there's other people and other, other women that feel and felt like I did and do. So I just want you to know that you're not alone. Um, and so good girl, good girl. So, um, I just wanted to kind of share my story and like my experience and the products that I use so that I could at least comfort some of those out there. Some of you out there who like maybe experience the same thing or are experiencing the same thing or maybe you will, I don't know. But anyways, if, you, if, you're, if you're wanting to see that, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and comment about it below as well and I will try and get that out sooner rather than later. I did hire a nanny. Um, she was with us for about three weeks. She was um, like a housekeeper slash nanny and I'm not telling you that to be like, oh, I have a nanny, like look at me. You know what I mean? The real thing is like, I can't do all of this by myself and I know that <laughs> so um, I don't want to act like I'm able to do all of these different things and like have all this help or like ha not have the help I should say I don't want to make it look like I'm able to do all this stuff and like have my shit together because I don't have my shit together um, and I'll get into that in a minute but I was really having a hard time and I still am some days about the fact that like my time's not mine anymore. Um, and that's one reason why I waited so long to have children because I was very busy with my career, um, you know, and I just like, so some days it's still really hard for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I gonna do this again? There's this fly that is driving me nuts. Um, am I gonna do this again? Like how, how does anybody chase a newborn around, or I'm sorry, chase like a one, a one and a half year old, two year old around, three year old, whatever, with a newborn too. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. So I kind of was like trying to like, you know, and even though you guys have been so chill about like, take your time, like, like take your time coming back to YouTube, take your time working, you know, whatever. Kind of like the birth of Harlow came at a really interesting time for me where I had sold my business last year. It's like a year ago as of, today um <laughs> and i was going through this really weird time where i was like okay what am i gonna do now like my heart and soul was creating this company and running this company and now it's gone like what do i do you know um and my income is different and so i was just going through this time and then then i got hit with having a baby which and i'm not saying hit like it's a bad thing but it is a lot of changes within one year um, so that's been really tough on me. 
I actually have a counseling appointment next week because I'm not afraid to admit that I have issues and I need counseling. <laughs> and if I'm gonna be a good mom and a good wife and just happy, I need that. So um, I'm going to counseling. So anyway, I've gone to her for a while though. It's not just because of all, all of the changes. But anyway, so I knew that I wanted to get back to work and do what I love and be creative and just have some have my alone time. I'm kind of a hermit, like you guys probably know that, but I put makeup on and I basically never, never leave the house. So anyways, I started looking on care.com um, for help and I was like, okay, well, I can justify the cost of it if I can have someone that like comes in and can help like prepare food, help like with the laundry, um, take Harlow for most of the time when you know, she's here. So I had somebody three days a week for six hours a day. And I really liked her when I interviewed her. Um, but unfortunately, like the level of cleanliness just wasn't there for me. And come to find out, it's just really awkward having a stranger in your house. Another thing that I thought would be fine, but isn't, is the fact that um, when you're a mom, it is really hard to be in another room or area of the home trying to focus like and work and you hear your child, whether it's crying, a fit, a tantrum, screaming. Uh, it's been, it's just very hard to not jump up and go help and feel like you should help, especially if you're like walking by or you're in the same area and they start fussing like it's awkward you don't want to stare at them because you don't want them to feel like you're judging how they're like taking care of your child because you have to be very picky with who you have in your house if you have to take care of your child it's just a very hard position to fill and like it's hard to like let that responsibility go so um and then i'd be filming a video and i could hear harlow crying in the background you might have heard her if you saw that video but anyways i just kind of decided that I need the house empty when I'm working, so I actually have a really um, great situation set up. A lady that lives about nine doors down. She watches um, two kids currently, so she has them on different days, but she's gonna take Harlow on Wednesdays for me from like 10 to five so that I can buckle down, work, garden, just do what I need to do to just be a human being and be myself. And there is nothing wrong with having time for yourself, do not feel guilty about taking your child somewhere or letting a friend watch them. Obviously you need to be careful and do, do all your research and all that kind of good stuff. But like, don't feel bad about taking time for yourself because we, at the end of the day are, I'm still Kristen. Like I need Kristen time. Kristen needs time to do things. And I honestly don't feel guilty about it at all because I know that I need it. So I wanted to like articulate this like a little bit better and I'm really tired so I'm probably not gonna be, I've been, my brain lately, like I don't even make sense when I talk, but basically one reason I feel really good about having time to myself and like having a whole day and like where you shouldn't feel bad either is that it gives you time to do like the you stuff and the house stuff so that when you are with your child, you can be present and interact with them and give them like a great experience with you as opposed to just like, kind of like putting them somewhere or whatever and then rushing around doing all the stuff because I kind of felt like I did that a bit today where I was like, let me put you in front of the sensory video real quick while I like clean the kitchen, do the laundry, fold this, fold that. And like, I just feel like because I'm here by myself for multiple days in a row, I have to do that or else I don't get anything done or get to eat. So um, yeah, that's one reason I just like feel like it's a really good thing to have like your own time. I did also want to touch on uh, fussiness and gas. Um, so you guys know that Harlow was super gassy, super fussy. Um, we had a very, very fussy baby. Literally the first two weeks I had her, I was like, obviously I loved her, but I was like, what have I done? Like I was just so stressed out with breastfeeding. Um, you name it, like just new mom stuff. I was just like, this is so difficult and I we had a really really fussy baby and watching YouTube videos where the baby was like all cute like waking up I'm like ah, ah, that is not what's going on here Harlow has come a long way she's way less fussy 
Uh, she still is very aware of her surroundings that like she gets bored very easily So I have to entertain her. I have to switch up the setting I have to do different things with her to, to hold her attention and keep her happy But um, she is like not really fussing anymore when it comes to like gas. She's just passing gas normally and pooping normally and she seems to be kind of getting over that, which is awesome. Very happy that we're at where we're at with that because it was very challenging having a fussy baby. I really felt like I couldn't go anywhere. Um, and now I, I kind of still feel like that, but I, I feel like I could like manage it now. You know what I mean? Like if we were to go to the store, I don't think that she would cry really unless she was bored, tired, or hungry. So, you know, I, I think like we've overcome that, like I'm gonna scream because I have gas hump, which is just, oh, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Now I'm gonna answer some of your questions. Any struggles within your relationship now that you guys have a baby? Yes, I would say that some people think that having a baby is like a fix-all for your relationship. I would say it's quite the opposite, um, in the beginning at least. Uh, I actually was told by my stepmom and my dad that they were really impressed with how I had kind of a hands-off approach with Nick and I kind of just like let him do his thing with her and I wasn't kind of, I wasn't like hovering over him. Um, but with that being said, Nick is very sensitive, so I, he would still kind of get upset with me if I would like kind of jump in and be like, well, this, this, or that, and like this, and this is my experience. But truly it's just that he was at work for three days and she's changing all the time and I've discovered new things. So it's coming from a place of love and me trying to help, but it does get misconstrued as like him feeling like he can't do something right and me like making that a reality by kind of stepping in. So I would say that is definitely um, a change, but uh, Nick is super supportive and loving and would do anything for us. And I see that every day in him and I'm just really grateful for that. Do you feel more connected to her and bonded now that she's not screaming 24 seven? Absolutely. Like she is like, I'm so excited to see her in the morning. I'm excited to see her when I, um, when I get home, if I've gone somewhere. So yeah, I, I'm like, I'm definitely way more bonded to her now than I was in the beginning. And I think that only grows. What's your favorite baby carrier? So I literally just bought a new one today. So Harlow is the type of baby, and maybe you have one of these as well, but she does not like to be facing in. She has to be facing out and see what's going on. And I was like that as a child too, and a baby. So I guess um, it's payback, but I can't just stick her in a carrier. And currently she can't hold her head up completely by herself. So I am not really able to put her in any carriers at the moment because she does not want to be, unless she's sleeping, does not want to be in a carrier that isn't facing out. So I just bought the Baby Bjorn, I think it's called Baby Bjorn One. Don't quote me on that, I'll link it down below. It's cheetah print and she can do, she can be on my back. This is when her head, you know, she can support herself and like her, she's not a little bobblehead, but she can face in, she can face out and it can go on your back as well. Postpartum healing at this point, how is having sex? So um, I ended up just getting drunk for the first time we were gonna have sex because I was so nervous about it. And um, it was painful. Uh, it still feels a little bit painful. It almost feels like when you go, if you've ever been in a long distance relationship, then you know what it feels like to have sex for the first time after you haven't for like three months or something like that. That's what it feels like for me. Uh, I'm sure everyone's a little bit different, but everything postpartum, I honestly never went for my checkup. Uh, the hospital never told me I was supposed to. And then just time came and went and here we are and I still haven't gone for my checkup. I don't recommend that, but um, everything seems to be fine down there. Like I don't, my stitches are gone. Like everything seems to be good. Nick from Nick, my husband, he says, can you show me how to make a baby? Do you actually like the Mockingbird stroller? Yes. Um, Granted, I've never tried another stroller, so there's that. But um, I do really like it. I think it's I think it's great. I've been using it. But my one um, 
thing that I will say about it though that Nick actually pointed out and I totally agree is it does have a long wheelbase. So if you're in small or crowded places, subways, uh, like we were in Germany, it's probably not the best for that. But the reason I did love it is because I wanted to bring our own car seat with us on the trip and I was able to do that and have our stroller and I just popped the car seat into the stroller with the adapter and it works great. So that's one thing that I really liked about it and like about it, but the wheelbase is a little long. Look who it is. It's little Harlita Panchita. <laughs> Um, okay, so I just woke her up from her nap and I had to let my camera cool down. We're gonna answer like another one of these questions and you guys asked so many great questions that I think I'm gonna do a part two to this and have it come out um, because, oh, watch the nail, baby. I reached into my ice maker the other day and my nail fully came up, my pinky nail. And, um, Oh, it had to be a shower or the makeup and it was the makeup today. I stink. <laughs> so you guys asked so many good questions. I think I'm gonna do a part two to this because um, I think these are good ones to answer. How did you sterilize the bottles while traveling abroad? So I brought dish soap um, and I brought quite a few bottles um, to get us through the flight, but I brought dish soap and I did plan on doing a, um, a uh, is, that, is that a tasty finger? I think we're already teething. <laughs> she's like chomping on fingers um so i think i was gonna do like a how to travel with a newborn because we did um a 12-hour flight with her to germany and um i did a lot of research so if you guys want to see that let me know but let's see um what's changed the most for you so i think um the th the thing that's changed the most for me is just uh being able to do whatever i want with my time like I'm so used to just sitting on the computer and then walking out to the garden or going to the store. And now it's like, I have to really think about stuff. Like if I go to the store, I'm like, okay, when does she need to go down for a nap? Has she eaten? Do I have everything I need to um, bring for her? So it's, uh, it's changed a lot, really. Um, <laughs> is that delicious? Is that delicious, my little babies? Oh, the baby talk. Say hi to everybody. Yeah. Say hi, honey. Look, can you lift your little head up? Huh? Can you? Are you so cute? Mama put lipstick on, so I can't kiss you. I want to kiss your little face, though. I want to kiss those little cheeks. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> She's so flexible. Are you so flexible? I'm gonna end this video here, and I'm gonna finish the questions um, on uh, that I've been. Wait, what's my phone? Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm gonna finish these questions in a part two next week. I just think there's too many good ones that I kind of want to like go into more detail on, and not just like quickly answer. And I don't want to make this video like 17 hours long. I don't know how I managed to talk so long. Like I watch other videos for other people, and I'm like, how did you get all of that into 15 minutes? Like I don't get it. Say goodbye, Harlow.